Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this particular video, we're gonna be taking a look mostly at performance differences between the 7Y30 and the 8100Y. Before we begin in getting into that, uh, I do wanna let everyone know that this particular 8100Y that you see right here, this I've had since November of 2018. So that does not mean that all of the revisions that are present in the July 2019 version of the GP2 and 2 are present here. And largely that is what you should be happy about or jealous of or envious of, of anyone that's gonna be getting the new models is all the revisions that are coming with the July 2019 version. Having said that, these particular two uh, units, they are roughly the same, this one being slightly better in terms of this one was a November build and this one is a July 2018, this is uh, November 2018. The only versions that anyone's gonna be getting of the 8100Y are also gonna be July 2019 uh, going forward. So very quickly, let's talk about the revisions and what things that you should actually care about with regards to the improvements of the GPM2 over the, the processor alone. And as we go through the performance differences in here, I think you're gonna find that it's not that attractive uh, and we'll go over that in a moment. So one of the big features of the July 2019 GPU 2 is that it supports five volt charging, which this does not. So previously you've always needed PD compli uh, compliant charges to charge a GPU 2 The July 2019 version will now use older versions of, so if someone has a battery pack that only supports five volt, uh, you will be able to use that on the July 2019 versions of the GPU 2 So that's a pretty big feature. Additionally, there is A2 support from the micro SD card, which basically rough translates to about 20% better uh, write speeds and 10% better read speeds on the micro SD port. Additionally, because of the 8100Y, we do support 4K60 out on the HDMI port, whereas it's only 4K30. It's basically the difference between H HDMI 1.4 and HDMI 2.0. So that's what is a benefit there. Uh, additionally, the speakers have a new um, amplifier built into the July 2019 version. So that's supposedly better, uh, better sound quality that you should be receiving out of the, the new revision. Additionally, and lastly, is that there if GBD has said that they've moved around uh, a lot of parts that would be generating a lot of heat and instead of it being so clustered in one spot it's kind of spread out a little bit better i don't have any uh, thermometrics read because i do not have the 2019 version i only have the 8100y versus the 7y30 both of these uh so as you can see this is the black nylon case uh that naloxone sports from the third uh cooling mod on indiegogo both of these have those composite heat sinks uh let me go ahead and show you that real quick so this is the composite cooling heatsink that you can have. What would be coming standard with you guys is a different variation. This is the stock heatsink and this is the third party cooling mod one. You will have it be a bit different because of the parts that have been moved around. Uh, this will be a different from, you will have a different shaped one if you have a July 2019 GPU in two. Uh, additionally, if you wanted the third party heatsink mod, he has uh, different versions that support the newer heatsink. That's just something to be aware of. Now we've talked about the uh, the differences of the revision model, which honestly are the big ticket items there. It's not so much the 8100Y, and we'll go over that in a moment. As you can see right here, we do indeed have the 8100Y, and I've had it for quite a while, and I've never uh, said anything, mostly because I've been waiting forever for GPD to actually come around and tell me that I should to do so. But it's been I've been waiting since November of 2018, and I was. I originally thought it was going to be February that it was coming out, um, but obviously it took longer. So in some respects, I'm glad I never told anyone because if I did, then people would have been upset because they've been waiting for a new model when there was nothing that would have materialized. Anyway, we can see the 6912 driver that we have here. Uh, I'm just gonna show you that I'm, I've installed the latest uh, June drivers from Intel. These are the modern Intel drivers that uh, Intel makes. 6912 is on both of them just so that we can see that it is going to be apples to apples so the first thing that i'm going to do right now i have both of these uh set to uh seven watt at a 60 millivolt both on cpu and gpu but seven watt tdp now uh, additionally i am on windows 10 build 1809 on both of these and they are both up to date so these guys are as identical as possibly they can be 
Um, all of the power configurations are set the same. Everything is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is this is a 7Y30 and this is an 8100Y. And we're going to see what happens when we run them at 7 watt each with a 60 millivolt. Um, we're changing the, the voltage 60 millivolts minus negative 60 millivolt on the CPU and GPU on both of these units. So without further ado, let me go ahead and start up a benchmark. Alrighty, so we haven't started the benchmark just yet, but I did want to kind of comment on what's going on right here. We can see that there's a little bit of different overlays, and that's just you know how I've been kind of tuning these. How I prefer to do everything is kind of showing the frame type, the frame time, and the frame rate at the top now, as opposed to kind of just underneath. We can see our frame rate here. Obviously, these are two different scenes, so the frame rate's going to be changing. The only important part that is here is two things. Number one, we want to look at the GPU clock which is right here. And you can see that these numbers are gonna be the same. So both of these feature the 615 Intel HD GPU. And both of these, regardless of the 8100Y or the 7Y30, they both max out at 848 megahertz on the GPU clock. So there will be zero benefit between the both. These are identical. And as we show these benchmarks for native games, you're gonna to start to see that there is no benefit. If you're GPU bound on these gaming benchmarks, you're not gonna see anything, which is unfortunate. Now, the next best thing that we're gonna see here is the CPU package power. You can see both of these are just hovering just under seven watts. You can see that right there and that right there. Now, that is just to indicate to you that both of these are indeed set to seven watt TDP. That is power limit one, power limit two. There will be no jump to 15 watt on either one of them. For sure, we are locked at seven watt TDP, both of them 60 millivolt on uh, CPU and GPU. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just start the benchmark. I'll go ahead and move this little mouse cursor up here. We'll start that one on the 7Y30 first, and we will start it on here as well. Also, I am using these kickstands, which are a part of the nylon thing, which are just amazing. And both of these, you're gonna see that um, do we have temperature on this one? We do not. But you can see right here that uh, we are at 54 degrees Celsius, and we'll go up to about 58 degrees Celsius on that third-party cooling mod, which is amazing. Um, and I do recommend it. I, I actually recommend everything about them, uh, though I do know that a lot of people have been waiting on them for a while, and it is kind of uh, irksome to people. But when you do get it in, I know that it's going to be awesome because I, I've, I have both of them here. Anywho, we will jump ahead to the end of this benchmark and we'll see what performance difference we get when we lock both of these at 7 watt. All right, so we're coming to the end of this benchmark. And one of the things that I want you to point out here is if you look at the CPU frequency here and the CPU frequency here, you'll notice that we're not actually achieving the maximum CPU frequency on either the 7Y30 or the 8100Y. And as you can see, here are the results. And surprisingly, the 7Y30 pulls ahead, and not just a little bit, but a lot of it. So you can see our FPS, our score, and our FPS and our score right here. Now, uh, what could be causing this? Is it just because of the 8100Y's ability to have a higher max frequency? Is it because uh, of my voltage settings not sticking on the 8100Y? That's probably more likely the case is that my XTU settings for undervolting are not actually working at the moment. So I should go ahead and take a look at that and double check it within the XTU program because this is an alarming difference. Uh, this is basically what you should see at when you do 7 watt and undervolted. And we will open up XTU here as well. Uh, one thing also worth noting is that both of these are at maximum brightness. Both of these systems were at 100% battery and we're going to show you what happens when we push this guy to 19 watts and we push this guy to 30 watts. Now this will never reach 30 watts, but let's see what happens. Okay, and indeed, my voltage setting was not set on the 8100Y, so we're going to try to go ahead and set these both to negative 60 millivolts now. Now, I just want to point out that this is not going to change anything. We would have just basically gotten the same results here because you're not going to achieve better CPU frequency or GPU frequency at all at 7 watt TDP. And that's one of the things that I really got to drive home here is that at 7 watt TDP, there is zero difference between these two systems. Uh, we are going to go ahead and raise the TDP to a bit higher, um, a lot higher, and we'll see how kind of inefficient things can, can get. Let me go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and just run this uh, Cifres old bat and see if this works. Uh, I will do five watt, uh, 7 watt. So we are doing 7 watt on both. And I will apply 60 millivolt on both. And I will go ahead and do that again just to double check. That's fine. 
Give me a second while I open up XTU again. Okay, so it does indeed look like the millivolt stuff is now working. Uh, so one thing that we are going to do is we're going to change these two TDP values. We're going to go ahead and set them to something ludicrously high. So we'll go ahead and set this as, on this particular one, we're going to do 17 watt, which is uh, basically the max it's going to use. It's not going to be able to use uh, up to 17 watt. It's only going to be able to do 15 watt. Uh, this is normal whenever you get the message because we are stopping the service, which will save us a little bit of uh, resources because it actually does run it. And we should be able to see right now, it's already respecting our new TDP. As we can see, it's already climbing super high. We'll go ahead and set the TDP on this as well. Go here, run as administrator, and just for ha-has and giggles, we will use 30 watt, even though it will never ever, ever in the history of ever reach that TDP. So you can see we're selecting 30 watt both right here. I will use negative 60 millivolt, and it will automatically stop, and we'll go back into the heaven benchmark. Okay, that closed, and then we're gonna see, you can see, let me get, <laughs> you can see uh, here power limit one is set to 30 watt, but obviously it'll never reach that. You can see the actual TDP is right here at 10.7 watt, uh, and this is already at 14 watt because you can see uh, we're at 3.4 gigahertz, but seldom will you actually hit that because heaven benchmark is multi-threaded it will it is dual core aware uh it's going to ping pong back and forth but mostly we're going to be in that 2.7 gigahertz area but it will be wasting power quite considerably just to try to hit these silly uh single core frequencies which happens very infrequently and doesn't really help the biggest thing right here is the 848 megahertz gpu clock that you see that is locked on both of these now this is extremely wasteful because uh, well, let's just go ahead and do the benchmark. And we're seeing that this guy is really chugging power. And this guy is maxing out with uh, the 2.4 gigahertz CPU, which is the max for the uh, 7Y30 in dual core configuration. It's 2.7, but only single core. Uh, 2.6 uh, in dual core, uh, single core, 2.4 gigahertz in dual core, and 848 megahertz is the same here. So now that we know that, let's go and run the benchmark and see what happens. Alrighty, we're going to be coming to a close soon on these benchmarks. The 7Y30 is going to finish first, and then the 8100Y version will finish. Once these two finish, I think it'll be wise to take a look at the battery levels on both. But very quickly, let's take a look at the GPU percentage up here. You can see we're at 99%, and our CPU usage is at 28%. So obviously, these benchmarks are GPU bound. And for the most part, is how everything is with regards to the GPU in 2 we are often GPU bound. We are never CPU bound because the CPUs on here are quite good. But even though we are running these at dual core 2.7 gigahertz, basically a 13% benefit, a 13% performance increase over the 7Y30, we are spending, you can see, look, 14 watt, 13.2 watts, around 14 watts while we're spending around 12 watts. So to achieve the extra CPU frequency on the 7Y30 uh, versus the 7Y30, you're gonna have to spend two more watts. The 8100Y performance is not gonna be a benefit to you at all CPU-wise unless you give it more power. Now, we can very clearly see that the 7Y30 is still winning here. Um, there is no rhyme or reason. This is all within margins of error, right? Because uh, the GPUs both run at the same frequency here. Uh, the CPUs on the 8100Y are faster, but it is of no benefit to us. So the only thing you're seeing here, you can see that with the additional, let me kind of do this, with the additional uh, CPU that we're spending, if you take a look at our minimum FPS, you can see that it is too higher. So the only real benefit that we're, we're getting out of here is that our frame times are better, uh, even though we don't really need it and it's not super awesome, fantastic, you are spending a tremendous amount of more power to get nothing with regard to 3D games. So um, a lot of native 3D games that are for PC, you're not going to see any performance improvement. Where will you see improvement? Well, number one, emulation, which I will show you an emulation test in a second, but also like uh, Unity. Unity can sometimes be CPU dependent, so you will see a considerable performance improvement on uh, a lot of Unity games that are not optimized in any which way. 
Um, there are a lot of uh, DirectX 9 games that will benefit from um, better CPU, but not nothing crazy. Basically, what I'm gonna what I'm telling you is that the most that you should expect performance-wise, getting better numbers is 13% better on the 8100Y and not on all instances. Uh, so in a lot of regards, you're going to have to first push your TDP very high just to achieve these max frequencies. You can see that both of these are 60 millivolt CPU and GPU, uh, negative 60 millivolt on CPU and GPU, but yet we are spending, where are we here? We're spending 10.4, let's just say we it goes up to uh, 12 watt and this goes up to 14 watt. So we're using two extra watts to basically get 300 extra megahertz on both cores on the CPU. That doesn't really do anything for us and we would be far better off having that going to our GPU clock which unfortunately we do not get on the 8100Y. So let's go ahead and just close this and we're going to go take a look at some Dolphin emulation and see what kind of performance numbers we're going to get. But very quickly we're also going to take a look at what the battery is like uh, and pushing this system to its limits. Now I don't mind running this at 14 watt because I have that third party heatsink. Um, also, I don't know if the, the, the configuration that GPD has done. So we're at 82% battery. This was at 100%. This one was also at 100%, and we're at 83%. So from the time difference that we are, not a huge difference, but if we were to keep on going, that 2 watt would really start to eat into it after some time. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Dolphin Test, which I'll do right now. Alrighty, so just a very uh, quick primer before we go into this. We're going to be using Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike, which is uh, one of my f better title to kind of look at here because it will be really hitting the CPU hard. Um, this is one game that is extremely hard for Dolphin to run and will require a faster CPU to run, and so we should see the 8100Y have a performance benefit here. Both of these are set to DirectX 12 as their back end. Uh, all other settings are enabled with it when it comes to hacks and stuff, and it is all at native resolution. So we're not actually doing 2x resolution, we're doing 1x resolution. Additionally, we're both running the same dev build of the Dolphin 10.621. I'm going to try to start these at the same time. And you should start, you should still be able to see the package power and see it come into play. Also, we will be seeing the CPU clock. Now you can see now Dolphin is dual core aware and by default, it does run the game in a dual core, dual core fashion. Uh, we can also take a look at what happens if we try to force single core and see what happens here. But you'll notice that this is only ever going to hit 2.7 gigahertz and this will only ever hit 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, where are we? We're at 30 FPS here, and we're at 20 FPS here, 25 FPS here. So this is basically in line with what you should expect. This is basically a 13% performance improvement over the 7Y30. And that's all it's going to get you. Uh, so 13% isn't going to do a whole bunch for you. You have barely running here, and you still have barely running here. Basically what this means is that if it was a 30 FPS game, you would have to have this running at 25 FPS just for this to hit 30 FPS. Unfortunately, this scene really needs 60, so we are way under. So if you were to have, um, uh, you would have to have the 7Y30 version running at around 54 FPS for the 8100Y version to barely hit 60 FPS. Um, you can see right at that factor five thing, this looks like it. We got an error, that's fine. And we were hitting 35 FPS here, and you can see that we're 20, 30, still under, and that CPU is really helping us. Uh, the extra frequency is actually helping us to get better frame rates. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna force a single core on this guy and see what happens. Alrighty, so I have gone ahead and disabled dual core, so we should only be able to see one core running. This is actually two cores that are going, but we should actually see this hopefully go to 3.4 gigahertz because I have disabled in Dolphin. So yeah, we can actually see it going. I could probably do process affinity right now. I was trying to do this through Dolphin directly, but it still looks like even with Dolphin running in a single core manner, that it is still batting around. Let's 
let's just put on the sound so you can hear that this is still messed up. It looks like even just disabling the dual core speed up on Dolphin that we still aren't able really to achieve sustained 3.4 gigahertz on a single core because we're bouncing back and forth so quickly between two cores that we're only ever hitting 2.7 gigahertz all core frequency. Let me go ahead and try to do some process affinity and see if that helps us at all. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and forced process affinity. I'm only using a single core and we'll see what is happening here. It still looks like we're kind of batting around. Uh, we're a little bit closer to hitting 3 gigahertz and 3.4 gigahertz more often, but we're really not benefiting from the frame rate at all here. Okay, you can see. Yeah, this is this. There's no help in this. So even just trying to force. Uh, so I have disabled dual core uh, within Dolphin. I have used process affinity to only target a single core. And even despite that, I'm kind of still hovering around 2.7 gigahertz. Though I am hitting 3.4 gigahertz every now and again. Though our frame rate is not helping from that at all. So again, what are the things that we should look at from this um, exercise? Largely, when you're going to be using the 8100Y, there are very few circumstances that it will help to have that extra frequency. Uh, as we can see, even just through regular benchmarks when we push it through, you will see 13% better performance. You're not going to see 30% because you, heard, you see 3.4 gigahertz. You're not going to achieve 3.4 gigahertz if ever. Mostly you'll be hitting 2.7 gigahertz and mostly you'll be hitting 2.4 gigahertz on the 7Y30. So largely, when we look at performance, again, 13% better and in very specific circumstances and only when you increase the TDP, which means that you're going to be having to use more power. You're, the 8100Y is literally the 7Y30 overclocked. And you don't overclock for free. You overclock with a cost. And the cost is two extra watts to hit that extra frequency. Now you will need to, to will GP's stock heatsink be able to withstand the heat of 14 watt? I don't know. I don't have that particular one. You will most likely need the third party cooling mod to even actually achieve that. Uh, so largely when we think about talking about the 8100Y performance, there is nothing to even worry about. There's nothing to actually even think about getting because for the most part, you're not going to be able to achieve it unless you have a better heatsink. Um, literally the better, the benefit is all the, the revision stuff, the five volt charging, the better speaker amp, the moved around components to better distribute heat, the, uh, HDMI 2.0, the VP9 stuff for, uh, the 8100Y, uh, the A2 memory card support and having 20% uh, faster reads and 10% better writes. Those are actual improvements that you will have that are guaranteed and not something that you will have to spend more power to achieve. Anywho, uh, that was a look at the 7Y30 and the 8100Y performance-wise and going over some of the revision stuff, which is largely the better thing. And um, just so that people know that you're not really missing out if by not having the 8100Y. Uh, so don't feel left out that you have the 7Y30. In fact, a lot of for a lot of reasons, you should be happy that you have it because it's easier to hit better uh, you won't be the max you can ever use is 12 watt and on stock heatsink you can kind of sort of get by with that but um not really i mean it, regardless of anything you're definitely not going to hit 14 watt on the stock i really doubt that you will anywho as always guys thank you for your time and thanks for watching